Hi, welcome back to Box of Delights. You up for playing some footy? Let's get to it. This is Soccer City, a strategy board game for football lovers. You already know what the game's about. <laughs> it's football. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to play. We're going to start real slow. We're going to set up a two-player game and have that match. And, and then, as we learn the rules, speed up a little bit and show you some of the action. There is a Legends expansion available. We're not going to be playing with it today. We're just going to be learning the basic game. Additionally, there's four players we're not going to be using. These are the players number 12 and 14. There is a cup mode, kind of a tournament mode, uh, where you're going to need some substitutes, but we're not going to be using these. And for the basic game, we're only going to choose six players and the goalkeeper. So we've got two players on the bench. So it depends what formation you want to take. So here's our goalkeeper. You've got two defenders, two and three. Player number 12 is also a defender. You've got two defensive midfielders, players four and five. You've got two attacking midfielders, players six and seven. And you've got two strikers, eight and nine, as well as player number 14 if you're playing cup mode. So why don't we mix things up a little bit and we'll have the red team play a more defensive lineup and the blue team a more attacking line up. We'll place the ball on the send spot, toss a coin to decide which team is going to kick off. We'll say uh, heads is red. Okay, red team kicks off. And we'll set their formation. You're placing players in hexes. The goalkeeper has an area of influence described by these white lines. Okay, so we'll place him somewhere in here. Partial hexes on the board like these are playable. There's another white line describing this area here. This is the area in which shots on goal are possible. So let's do something like this. Okay, we'll now have the blue team take up their positions. And we're ready for the kickoff. Now the main thing to learn about this game is that it's card driven. All right, so each player is going to have a hand of cards, and those cards are going to be used to pass the ball, advance up the field, attack, take shots on goal, all that kind of stuff. Each player, each coach in the game, starts with three attacking action cards, three defensive action cards two shot and goal cards and a fixed set of four ball cards. The four ball cards you're looking for are two shorts, one medium, one long. Once you've picked those out and given them to each player, you shuffle that deck. Okay. Each coach also gets one of these tactical pads, okay, that gives you a breakdown of what each of the different moves means. It's kind of like a player aid. This ball deck becomes the timer for the game. All right? When we've worked our way through the first 45 cards, that's the end of the first half. We reshuffle, we shuffle in three extra cards. These are injury time cards, so that we end up with 48 minutes, those three extra minutes for injury time in the second half, all right? So we'll put these to side for now. I'll quickly point out a couple of other areas of the board so you can see what's going on. Down each side, we have an area for bookings. So for example, if the blue player four gets a yellow card, we'll place a yellow card like this on the number four spot, okay? Sending offs in reverse, we have a, a red. This is a turn-based game. So everything's going to be nice and slow to get us into this game, loosen us up and understand how we're going to play. So we've got red kicking off and they've got a huge hand of cards with which they can start making some decisions. Now the makeup of your hand is always going to stay the same. All right? every, at the end of every turn, because it's turn based remember, you're going to replenish with the cards that you've used. Okay? So if I've got an attacking card, defending card, played, I'm going to pull back one of each of those, keep the composition of my hand the same. Now as it goes, we are the attacking team with the player with the ball. 
And to start the game off, we're in a set piece. All right, set piece is when we're not in open play. So we've got a kickoff, it's a set piece, and the only thing you can do from a kickoff is make what's called a close pass to a teammate. And normally passes are going to be made using your ball cards. Okay, we've got a long pass, a medium pass, a short pass. All right, but a close pass doesn't need a ball card. Close passes can be intercepted by defenders, but we'll look at that when that comes up. Otherwise, the close pass is automatically successful. We've kicked off. Once you've kicked off, then the regular game flow begins. And we start with the attacking team taking their turn. The attacking team is this team here in possession with the ball. The blue team then becomes the defensive team. And on your turn, it's a one, two, three, four step. Okay. First step is pass or advance. You're playing your ball cards to pass or advance with the ball. Okay. The second step is an attacking action. You can play your attacking action cards. Step three is to take a shot on goal using your shot on goal cards. And then step four is called team repositioning. That's when players off the ball are moving around the pitch. Once the attacking team's had their turn, it moves to the defensive team and they have just two steps. The first step is a defensive action using their defensive action cards and then team repositioning. All right? They can't take a shot on goal, they can't use attacking actions, they can't pass or advance with the ball because they're not in possession of the ball. If we hit a set piece, you know, someone scores a goal or there's a foul or the ball goes out of play, then we're going to restart just as you saw there for the kickoff. All right, so let's take our first step, which is pass or advance. When you're making these passes or advances, do keep in mind that repositioning phase, all right, which is when everyone's going to move. So what that means is if I wanted to do a pass, I don't know, pass back across here, it doesn't have to necessarily pass straight to his hex. It might be to a hex that he can move onto the ball. Okay, so if I passed into here, for example, and then moved on to it in the repositioning phase to take possession. Okay, so I don't always have to pass straight to the player. Let's play in advance. Let's have this guy move up the pitch. Now, if I was to make a short advance, then the player moves one hex with the ball. Okay, the ball moves one hex, the player moves one hex. A medium advance says the player moves one hex, and the ball moves two, okay? So we push the ball on ahead of us. And you've guessed it, a long advance has the ball move three spaces forward and the player one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a medium advance. So the ball goes to two, we go one. That's step one done, okay? That's the pass or advance. Step two, attacking action. Now normally you've got two choices here. Here's my attacking action cards. Up in the top right, they have these tactical moves like sprint, uh, additional pass advance, a crossing pass. Okay, These little flagged up parts in the top right are independent of the rest of the card. Okay, So you can use a card for its tactical move. These are summarized on your chart here, so this tells you what they do. So sprint, for example, will say uh, the player that makes a medium or long advance moves an extra he hex. This tactic is played after the pass advance phase. Okay, so I've just done a medium advance. I can now play the sprint and that allows my player to move one additional space. The other way to use one of these cards is for what's called a dribble. And the dribble only comes into effect if there's a defending player on an adjacent hex. And then you can use the other parts of the card. We're not doing that because there's no defender adjacent, so we're only looking at the tactics here. Remember, you don't have to play a card if you don't want to as well. Incidentally, if you can't remember, there is another guide down here to tell you about short, medium, and long. All right, that's steps one and two. So, pass or advance. Step two, attacking action card. Step three, shot on goal. We can't do. Four, team repositioning. So we're going to do that next. Repositioning players mean they can move one hex in any direction. Any player that's been moved in the attacking phase can't be repositioned. 
So let's think about repositioning our players. Okay, that's our repositioning done. The attacking team's turn is over, so we replace replenish our hand with the cards that we've used. So we take one ball card and one attacking action card. And the turn passes to the defensive team. Now remember, they're not in possession of the ball, so it's going to be defensive action followed by reposition. So we're not going to use these, we're not going to use these, these, these. It's the blue cards we're interested in. Okay, defensive action. Now again, just like attacking actions, you can use these cards in one of two ways, either for a defensive tackle, using the banner in the top right, or as a tackle move, all right? Instead of dribble, we call it a tackle move. But again, this is only appropriate if you have a defender in a hex adjacent to the ball carrier, all right? We don't. So the only option we have here is either to do nothing, then move on to our reposition, or use one of these tactics. We've got goalkeeper anticipation. This says this can only be played right after the attacker makes a pass to the box, okay, or from a corner kick. We've got the offside trap. This one can only be played right after the attacker makes a short, medium, or long pass. So the offside trap is going to involve us moving our defenders up. Other card is another goalkeeper anticipation. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to pass here as the defender, and instead we'll just move straight into the reposition phase. Back to the attacker. Well, the attacking player's got a good plan here. We're going to play, remember it's pass advance first, so I'm going to play a short advance and move in here. We move to the attacking action phase. I'm going to play this tactic here, additional pass advance. This can only be played straight after the pass advance phase, which we've just done, and we make an additional pass and advance, and I'm just going to do another short advance. We're moving right into this space here. We still can't shoot, but we move now to the reposition phase. So our winger's going to move up. Defence, well, we may as well move them up as well. Let's go around the back here. And then we redraw. So two balls and one attacking action. We're going to try and close him down if we can. I think we're going to have to just reposition. And yeah, this should leave the attacking team in a trickier position. I do want to stay on side with him. That's going to make that short pass possible. So, but then he could cross in and move. Yeah, I'm going to move back here. Let's just move this guy back here. Attacking team now, let's see, what did I draw? I've got another long pass, and this time a fast break. A fast break might be useful. I could make a short pass here, play on through, but I think what I'll do, given that I've drawn the defenders in, is play a medium pass. Now remember, a medium pass is five to eight hexes. I don't have any defenders within one hex of me. These are passes in the air, so they won't be blocked. So there's only six directions a pass can be made in, right? So I can go this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could play it onto him. Or, you know, one of these other directions. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could pass it up into the box, but I've got no one to run onto it. Otherwise, you can make a square pass, which will go across these lines. On a short pass, it's one hex, like this. On a medium, it's two, so that would be here. One, two. And then a long would be three or four. Okay, one, two, three, four, something like that. Yeah, a little bit stuck up against it here. But actually, I've got a plan. Um, let's take this one, and I'm going to use... I'd like to have had a short pass, but I've used them all. I'm going to use the long pass, um, long pass in advance, so a long advance actually. And what this does, remember, it moves the ball, and advance is any of the six directions, right? it doesn't have to be forward. So the this moves the ball three spaces and the player one. So we'll advance in this direction. I'm going to hold off on any tactics and we'll move straight to the reposition phase. So reposition, and we'll get another ball card. Defensive team now repositioning. 
Okay, we've got a loose ball now, which means there's no attacker, there's no defender, so we're going to move straight to the reposition phase. And this is where I can take possession again. We'll continue. And this time we're going to do something a little bit clever. We're going to use a one-touch pass in advance. This tactic here says I can only be used right after a player repositioning if one of my players takes possession of the ball. So now's the right time to use it. And basically this says I can now play a pass or advance card. So I'm going to look for another long pass. Ball moves three. One, two, three, and the player moves one. So you can see you can string some pretty neat moves together. What we do want to see though um, is some tackling and dribbling in action. So let's just reposition our defenders and yeah, I think that we could we could use a dribble this time. Although I can just cut through the middle here. <laughs> let's see if we can't get a goal. Let's do medium pass and advance. The ball goes forward two spots, we go forward one. Um, Defenders moving in. Let's draw back up. The defence cutting across. I think the goalkeeper is going to come out a little bit here. Now let's keep him here. Um, attackers aren't in possession, so we're moving into the reposition phase. And now I think the defence is going to try and tackle. We've got players adjacent to the attacker. So these are my three defensive cards. Remember, the tactics aren't working for me at the moment. I've got the offside trap and goalkeeper anticipation, which is only really working when the attacker's passing the ball. At the moment, they're keeping everything tight with these advances. But what we're going to do now is a tackle. I've got three types of tackle here. I've got a cutoff, a blow, and a shoulder charge. Uh, the numbers are important. They go from three to five. The higher number, the more effective it is. But they've also kind of got this rock, paper, scissors type effect going on. Some of these tackles will override certain dribbles and certain dribbles will override these tackles. Remember, defenders are tackling and the attacker is dribbling. And below, each card tells you what each type of tackle does. Let's go for the the blow, which blocks dribbling. Okay, So we're going to make a dribble and we play this face down. And we have now what's called a face-off. The attacking player now chooses one of his attacking actions and we're looking at these values in the top left this time. But we mustn't ignore the attributes of the players themselves. The ball carrier is position number six. That makes him an attacking midfielder with attacking points three. Here we have two defenders adjacent. Number two, number four. This player is a defender. This is a defensive midfielder. So we're going to go and try and tackle with our defender who has a defensive value of 4 as opposed to the defensive midfielder with a defending value of 3. Okay. What that means is I know that the defender's already got 4 plus what's ever here. I've got 3 plus whatever I choose. I'm going to choose my number 5 as well. Carousel. Okay. So again, place face down. Both reveal. Five carousel beats shoulder charge. Five blow blocks dribbling. Okay, so what that means is irrespective of the values, if I'd chose dribbling here, he would have won. If I'd chosen shoulder charge here, then carousel would have automatically won. As it stands, we've got five plus five plus the values here. Four plus three. That's nine versus eight. The defender steals the ball and then we move according to the instructions here it says defender steals the ball and moves two hexes forward with it and moves attacker one hex in any direction so we move two forward and moves the attacker in any direction oh, let's push him back here so we've pushed him off the ball stolen it and then moved that's a great tackle what's interesting now is Whenever a face-off occurs, that kind of interrupts the whole of the turn order. Okay, so there's no repositioning phase, there's none of that other stuff. We start again um, as soon as we conclude the face-off with the attacking team's turn. Whether that's the old attacker 
they retain possession or whether the defender has now stolen the ball. So play moves back to the blue team and they start as attackers. And I think what we'll do is make a long square pass. I'm going to play the long pass card and the square is this direction. So long is uh, three squares, three hexes, one, two, three. Uh, we're not in possession anymore, so we're going to move to the reposition. Any player removed, and the player who's on the ball can't move, but that means everyone can reposition. There's a ball card. And now it's the defending team's turn, and they are adjacent, so they could be making a tackle here. So red team, as a defensive action, we have backward step and tactical foul. A backward step lets me pull my defenders two hexes back towards my own goal line, which might be useful so they're not breaking. But I'm going to save that and instead I'm going to make a tackle with um, pressure for we have got a face off, it's a defensive midfielder making the tackle, position number four, so his defence is three, and I'm playing against a number seven, an attacking midfielder, attacking point is three, so it's three versus three, so it's all down to the cards. So, they're going to choose an attacking action card, let's try a scissors move, it's only a three, but it blocks slide tackle and blow. Let's see, we've got a feeling that they might be trying to slide tackle me. We reveal. Pressure. And scissors move. The defensive red team wins the tackle. Interestingly, if I'd have gone for the four and the values were equal, a foul is committed. And the foul will be committed by the player who started the face off. So in this case, it's the defending team. That means, of course, that a free kick is going to be awarded to the blue team here, the attacking team. But they could, if they wish, um, kind of push their luck a little bit. So the red team could say, right, I've committed a foul, but let's roll the dice. And what they'll do then, instead of having an automatic foul, they'll roll the dice. And if we get the whistle, then the referee blows up and says, OK, foul's been committed and we carry on as before. The point, though, is you're trying to win the ball with a foul. So if the ball is rolled, then you carry on as if they'd actually won the tackle. But there is a risk that you'll get shown a card. As it goes, we didn't play set, uh, this card. So the defender's gonna win possession of the ball. And we follow the instruction. It says the defender steals the ball and moves one hex forward. Move the attacker in one piece in any direction. That is a bad place to lose possession. However, there's a price to pay. This quality defensive move. You'll notice there's this EF rosette here in the bottom left. And that means that some external factor is now influencing the game at the end of this turn. We draw from the top of the external factor deck and we see what it says. This one says refreshing player. Only if you are losing the match or the qualifying round and you still have substitution left, the player you substitute during the next three turns will receive a plus one bonus to all his dribbles and tackles until the end of the match. Pretty neat, huh? We're not losing the match or and this isn't a, a cup game, so this isn't going to do much for us. So I'll just push that to one side. What I'd like to do though is show you how we can get attack on goal. So let's get a medium pass in advance and move forward, reposition, we've got to close him down. Attacking team repositions. 
He's moving into an offside position, so let's keep him. Let's move him inside. But what I'm going to do here, I think, is make a short pass, a uh, short advance, rather. A short advance. And I'm going to move these two guys in here. We are offside, I guess, aren't we? But he's got to come in. Um, and of course, then, what I want to do is make a square pass. Obviously, there's, there's tactics and stuff that could be playing here, but... A uh, medium would do, so it's a medium square pass, that's so two hexes, this is a ball in the air, if he was adjacent I couldn't make that square pass because he'd be blocking. Then it's tactics, which I don't want to do, but then the next phase of course is shot on goal. I remember we got a couple of shot on goal cards. And also you've got these special shots with, with some conditions, okay, that gives you a plus three. Remember the shot on goal is your third phase of the attacking turn, just before we reposition. Okay, so we've had the pass advance, we've had the attacking action, now we've got shot on goal. This first card says, shot on goal while outside the penalty area and unmarked. We're not marked because there's no players in those six hexes around us and we're outside the penalty area. So we could have a missile giving us a plus three. The other card is a seven already. And this one says, shot on goal while inside the penalty area and unmarked after receiving a long or medium pass or pass to the box. Okay, so that would be a 10 for the bicycle shot if, I mean, we did get that pass. We got a cross here, um, but we're not inside the box. So we're going to play this card here. This is an 8. But also we have to take into account the attacker. He's piece number 8. And his attacking score is four. He's a really good attacker. So eight plus four is twelve. Twelve is our target. The goalkeeper's defensive value is four points. If he was outside the penalty box, then it would be reduced to two. But to go with that four points, we need to randomly draw a goalkeeper save card. It's a ten, the saint. Added to our 4 is 14, yeah, that is a good save. If the goalkeeper was outside the box and only had a 2, then it would have been a draw here, 12 v 12, in which case it would have gone for a corner kick, because he's inside the box. We're good. We've managed to successfully save. But of course, it could have all been very different. Let's say something like this was drawn. Then a fingertip save wasn't enough. 4 plus 6 is only 10. But you'll notice that certain goalkeeper cards will save any type of shot. So if this was a spiral shot, remember we had a special which was a missile, and it would have saved it regardless. But this would have been a goal. Here's an example. We've got fingertip here, uh, which sends the missile to the corner. So it does do a fingertip save of that missile. As it stands, it's a goal kick. The shot was saved, and we start a set piece from a goal kick. Remember, that's a short, uh, a close pass to any player on our team. So players can now rearrange everyone, and when you're ready to go, blow that whistle. And that's Soccer City. I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration. You can see the rules are pretty straightforward, and there's lots of interplay of cards here. So lots of action. You can pull off some neat little moves. It really does feel like an exciting game. Of footy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.